Mr. Thomas. Greetings, Earthlings. Here we go with chapter two, lesson number 13, parametric differentiation one. So first of all, to begin with, what is a parametric differentiation? Well, well, let's start off by looking at parametric equations. And parametric equations are where we have two different variables and they are written in terms of a third variable known as a parameter. A lot of the time, the parameter will be t for time or theta. For example, you may have x equals t squared and y equals 2t. Both x and y are written in terms of t. Imagine if you were firing a rocket. Imagine if the path of the rocket was firing across a coordinate grid. Well, obviously the x value and the y value would change depending on the time. So x is dependent on t and y is dependent on t. So we're writing both x and y in terms of this third variable t for time. For example, if we knew, imagine if this was a path of a rocket and we knew t was three. So after three seconds, we could find that the x value would be three squared because we're replacing t with three. That would give us nine. And the y value would be two times three, which is six. And so again, both x and y are dependent on t. And if we know t, then we could work out the x and y values. So we could work out the coordinate. So the coordinate at time t equals three would be nine, six. To find out the derivative then, so to differentiate and get dy by dx in terms of t, if we have x and y written in terms of t, what we can do is we can use the formula. dy by dx equals dy by dt divided by dx by dt. Let's try some examples. So example one, find an expression for dy by dx given that x equals t squared and y equals 2t. So we're given x and we're given y, both are in terms of t. So we need to find the derivatives. We need to differentiate x and y both with respect to t. So because we're differentiating x with respect to t on the other side, it's written in terms of t, we'd have dx by dt. And that would equal, if we differentiate t squared, Jensi, what would you get? 2t, perfect. And if we differentiate y, which is 2t, well, we're differentiating y with respect to t, so we've got dy by dt, and that would equal, Jensi, 2, good, well done. From there, we can work out dy by dx because dy by dx is dy by dt divided by dx by dt. dy by dt is 2, dx by dt is 2t, so we would have 2 over 2t. And if we simplify that, go on one more time, Jensi, Perfect, you would have one over t, and that is your answer. Example two, a curve is defined by the parametric equations, x equals t squared plus one over t squared, and y equals t squared minus one over t squared, where t is not equal to zero. Find an expression for dy by dx in terms of t and give your answer in its simplest form. So, x and y are written in terms of t, so there is that third parameter, t. To work out dy by dx, we need to differentiate both x and y with respect to t, and then we could sub both dx by dt and dy by dt into this amazing wee formula. So, differentiating x, x equals t squared plus 1 over t squared. Erin, what would you do before you differentiate? Perfect, rewrite the 1 over t squared. So 1 over t squared is the same as t to the minus 2. Good. From there, you can differentiate. So we're differentiating x with respect to t, so we'd have dx by dt, and that would equal, bring the power down, take one off, bring the power down, take one off. We've got 2t, take away 2t to the power of negative 3. And then if you rewrite that with your positive indices, we'd have 2t, take away 2 over t cubed. Do the same with y. If you differentiate t squared minus 1 over t squared, junior, brilliant. You would rewrite the 1 over t squared is t to the power of negative 2 before you differentiate. Now we've done that, we can differentiate. So we're differentiating y this time and with respect to t, so dy by dt. That would equal differentiate t squared, you get 2t. Differentiate negative t to the power of negative 2, bring the power down so it become plus 2t to the power of, take one off, and you'd have negative 3. Again, rewrite that with positive indices and we'd get 2t plus 2 over t cubed. From there, we need to work out dy by dx. How would you do that, Oliver? 
brilliant. dy by dx is dy by dt, which is going to be this dy by dt, and we'd be dividing that by dx by dt, which is this. So let's go over the page and do that. That is what we would get, both of those answers, dy by dx equals dy by dt by dx by dt. And from there, well, we've got fractions within fractions. It's very ugly. What could we do, Sugra, to make it a little more attractive? Yeah, perfect. What you could do is you could multiply each of the terms by t cubed. So if you do that, it will clear the fractions within the fractions. So doing that, multiply the 2t by t cubed. Multiply the 2 over t cubed by t cubed. Multiply the 2t by t cubed. And the minus 2 over t cubed by t cubed. If you do that, then you will end up with 2t times t cubed is t to the power of 4. 2 divided by t cubed times t cubed. Well, they would just cancel out, leaving you with 2. 2t two times t cubed would be 2t to the power of 4. And take away 2 over, well, again, it's divided by t cubed times by t cubed. They will cancel, leaving you with minus 2. From there, take out any common factor as well. You've got a common factor in the top and the bottom of 2. So you can take out the 2 as a common factor. You could really just cancel them out then. We're dividing the top and the bottom by 2. Leaves us with t to the power of 4 plus 1 over t to the power of 4 minus 1. And really, that would be your answer. Woo! Example 3. A curve is defined by the parametric equations x equals theta minus sine theta and y equals 1 minus cos theta for theta between 0 and 2 pi. Find an expression for dy by dx in terms of theta. So first of all, x is in terms of theta, y is in terms of theta. If we want to work out dy by dx, well, we know dy by dx equals dy by dt by dx by dt, but this time the parameter is not t, it's theta. So dy by dx would be dy by d theta over dx by d theta. So we need to differentiate both x and y with respect to theta. So dx by d theta, if we are differentiating x with respect to theta, we would have theta would become 1. Just the same way if you differentiate x with respect to x, you would just get 1. If 1x would become 1. So 1 theta with respect to theta would just become 1. After that, take away sine theta. If you differentiate that, you would have negative cos theta. Y equals 1 take away cos theta. If you differentiate y with respect to theta, you'd have dy by d theta. If you differentiate 1, well, that would disappear. And negative cos, if you differentiate that, would go to positive sine theta. So we've got dx by d theta and dy by d theta. From there, to get dy by dx, well, that would be dy by d theta over dx by d theta. Remember, you're taking the equation and the parameter is not d, it's theta. So it's dy by d theta over dx by d theta. From there then, well, dy by d theta is sine theta, dx by d theta is 1 minus cos theta. Sub that in. You can't do anything else with it. That is your answer. Woo! Well done. Example 4, a curve is defined by the parametric equations x equals t over 1 plus t and y equals 1 plus t over 1 minus t. Find an expression for dy by dx in terms of t. So we're starting off with x and y and they're both in terms of this third parameter, t. x is in terms of t, y is in terms of t. So to get dy by dx, we know that's going to be dy by dt by dx by dt. Woo! So we need to differentiate x with respect to t and y with respect to t. So to differentiate x with respect to t, Ina, help us out. What would you do? Perfect. Yes, you would have to use the quotient rule here. And we're using the quotient rule because we've got one function in terms of t divided by another function in terms of t. So first thing we're thinking is u and v, u dash and v dash. So u is going to be equal to 1, v is going to be equal to 1 plus t u dash would be du by dt. If we differentiate u with respect to t, we'd end up with 1. If we differentiate v with respect to t, again, we would get 1. So from there, dx by dt would be u dash v minus uv dash over v squared. So we're going to have t times uh, u dash times v. So it's 1 times the 1 plus t. So 1 plus t times 1. Take away t times 1 or 1 times t, and then you're dividing that by v squared, the 1 plus t all squared. 
From there, if you multiply the brackets here, well, I would give you one plus t, then you'd have takeaway t, that'd be over one plus t squared. And then from there, well, you're thinking you've got one plus t minus t, so plus t minus t would cancel, leaving you with one, and you'd have one plus t all squared. Do the same thing with y. Y is in terms of t. We want to differentiate that atom. What would you do? Perfect. You would have to again apply the quotient rule because you've got one function in terms of t divided by another function in terms of t. So write down u and v. u is going to be equal to 1 plus t and v is going to be equal to 1 minus t. Differentiate u with respect to t, du by dt would equal 1 and dv by dt or v dash would equal negative 1. From there, dy by dt would be u dash v minus u v dash over v squared. So u dash times v would be 1 times the 1 take away t. And we're taking away this 1 plus t times negative 1. And that'll be over v squared, so 1 minus t in brackets squared. From there, if you get rid of these brackets, well, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times negative t is negative t, negative 1 times negative 1 is plus 1, and if you multiply the brackets here, well, that will give you negative t, but then you're multiplying by negative 1, which will give you plus t. From there, negative 1 t plus 1 t would give you 0 t, so it just leaves you with 1 add 1, which is 2. After that, you are wanting to work out dy by dx, and you find dy by dx by using the formula dy by dt over dx by dt, this formula here. So if we take both of these answers, dy by dt, and divide by dx by dt over the page, we will end up with that formula, and then we can just sub in. So we've got both of those answers and we're putting them in there. So we've got one fraction divided by another fraction, but really what you're thinking is you're dividing fractions. And to divide fractions, you probably want to go back to when you did this, if you had something like a half divided by three quarters, you know you would flip the three quarters upside down and change it to a times. So we're starting off with this fraction, the two over one take away t squared. We're dividing it by this other fraction, so you can write it out as divided by that other fraction with the 1 over 1 plus t squared. You can write it out like that. I'm trying to write it with a mouse. It's not working too well. But you would be dividing it by that. But then to divide fractions, you would flip that fraction upside down and change it to a times, which I'm representing with the dot. From there, well, the 2 is going to stay as a 2. And it'd have 1 plus t squared over. And then if you multiply that by 1, you'd just have 1 minus t all squared. But if you leave the 2 just as it is, well, if you think you're multiplying the 1 plus t by itself, you're squaring that, and you're multiplying the 1 by minus t by itself as well. So you're squaring the top and squaring the bottom. So what you could do is you could write out the top over the bottom and then put the squared just around all of that because you're squaring the top and you're squaring the bottom. And that would be your final answer. That is parametric differentiation. Try these questions in the workbook. It is on page 40. See how you are with parametric differentiation with the first set of examples and questions before you move on to look at the next lesson. Best of luck. Any problems, let me know. Bye.